often when we're modeling, uh, we need to reference other geometry in the project. Um, and there's one common way most people do this, um, and that way is using Modelink. Uh, so if you click on Modelink, um, you would have to search for your drawing. You can either filter it or if you know um, the location of it, select um, the parts or the drawings and click OK, and it loads those parts into your current drawing. So um, this works, but there are some uh, issues with it or some um, non-ideal situations. One is that you need to know where your drawings that you want to import. And when you look for uh, a project that has ten, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of parts uh, and, and thousands of drawings, you don't always know which drawing to load. And especially when there, there's all these disciplines from VH, VHC, structure and hall and um, electrical, you don't know the naming conventions they may use. Another issue, uh, as you can see here, is that this structure drawing, say if I'm working in this area, brings in the parts from both uh, sides, which is what's in that drawing, which would um, slow down the the, um, uh, the drawing if I want to orbit. Uh, but more importantly, it adds to the noise. It just adds all this items here, which I don't really need. I'm just looking at this area. So I'm going to show you a better way of actually loading uh, parts um, and it's loading what we call part views. So it's, it's a command that we've added uh, several years ago. And to access it, if you go to SC uh, Utilities and then go to the Part View panel, you'll see this um, load uh, extensor, the last one you, you uh, uh, used. So there's three different ways of loading part views. Um, so this is by loading by extents, which is more of a volume. So you select a bounding box, um, load selected um, by select extents, which is uh, it uses the extents of the parts that you select, which is what I'll do in this demonstration. And then last is uh, load associated parts. And this is more for structure when you uh, want to modify a part that has many identicals and, and other relationships across the project. You want to see what will change. Uh, you'll be able to load those into your current drawing. So in this case, I'm just going to uh, go by load selected extents. And I select all the parts that are in the area that I want to um, to load other additional parts. So say, for example, I'm actually just working in this area. I want to load all parts that are um, around the, these extents. So uh, once I select them, what Ship Constructor will do is get the bounding box, uh, look through the project data model, find absolutely every single part in the project that uh, intersects that um, that area and bring them into this current drawing. So you as you can see, the uh, ship constructors uh, did that already. Um, and you can see it just brought all, all the parts just in that area that I have actually selected. So you can, you can see that these are actually parts. These are not X reps. And there's some advantages to that, that these are uh, part views. Um, and these part views, uh, when I select it, has the part view item, but also gives me all the properties uh, of that part. So it gives me its assembly name, its GUID if I needed it, um, if it's been nested, um, it gives me the drawing name, any user-defined attributes, and so forth. So it, it gives me a lot more information of these individual parts, not just of the whole XREF uh, drawing. Um, also, if I want to do interferences, I could uh, uh, do an interference, and these would be participate in the interference checking. Uh, if I want to use a product hierarchy, and I select these items, uh, they select in the product hierarchy, so I can select them, and if I want to move them, if I have permissions for whatever reason, obviously I wouldn't do it from a build sequence, but if I had my secondary product hierarchy of uh, locations or systems and stuff like that, I would be able to modify it that way. One of the last uh, features I want to show you, and this is more of an advantage pack feature uh, that part views support. If I click on any of these items, uh, so say for example, I click on this one, and if I um, see that it, with the drawing name, down here is uh, FR36. I could always just go open that drawing, but I would have to go through Navigator or use uh, uh, Project Explorer and just type it in. Um, so I would be able to open it. Th 
this way by selecting this drawing, but that even just took some time to do that, even though not too much time, it still took um, a little more time than uh, you need to. So if you actually right click on these, uh, on this one, and then you go to open model drawing, it will go and open up uh, the drawing um, and relatively quickly. So I'm using MDI, so it just opens a different tab, and now I have uh, this drawing. So it was just an, a little bit easier way of interacting with this and going to that drawing and, uh, and being able to make any modifications if I need to. Um, and that um, open drawing works in any other types of uh, drawings, so not just pipe drawings or part views. They, they work in uh, assembly drawings, production drawings, and so forth. A um, couple of last commands or, or features that we have from this is the part views do, don't update automatically. They have to be uh, updated um, um, or initiated by you. And this is just by clicking this uh, refresh part view. So this way, when you load these drawings, it doesn't slow down uh, the opening of the drawings or uh, you're, you um, interacting with the drawing or modeling. And last but not least, when you're done with the part views, you want to get rid of the part views. Uh, you can select the delete part views and it is deletes all the part views. So I hope uh, the video was uh, useful. Uh, using part views will allow you to reference a very small set, set of parts into your current drawing that um, are in the area or only in the area that you're actually um, interested in. Uh, you don't need to know where those parts are, their lo locations, which drawing, who's modeling. Uh, so they'll be updated um, or added into your drawing whenever you want. And once they're added, it can interact with it. You can get a lot of information from uh, properties as well as interferences and product hierarchy and many others. Uh, so hopefully this video was useful.